Namma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityanamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharinyaye Nivishesha Shunyam Vati Pasyajyadishatarinya Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gajaja Shri Vasari Gaura <coughs> Gaura Bhaktari Hinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada Jai Guru Dev Guru Dev Guru Dev Jai Jaya Guru Dev Jai Jaya Guru Dev Guru Dev Guru Dev Guru Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Karadhara Shri Vasudhi Gaura Bhaktarinda Ki Jai Hare Krishna Welcome Rituan Prabhuji How are you? Are you warm? Oh, Dabi, it must be even more colder than here. Yeah, it's very cold, Prabhu. Yeah. What, what, it's today what? it's minus, uh, it's showing that at night it will be minus two. Now it's uh, one degree. Wow. Uh, is that your, your coldest temperature you have experienced? I know last time it was minus seven in Dabi. So they are oh. predicting that this time it will be minus 12. Somewhere in in UK, I'm not sure whether it will be here or not. I hope not. In India? In India, like like in Kolkata, it's max. I mean, the minimum that com uh, comes down in you know the harshest of winter is around eight, seven maximum. I mean, minimum, I would say. So you have never experienced that cold before? Not before I came to UK. <laughs> Mayapur is a bit colder, like so. When we went to uh, Mayapur in the winters, it was a bit chilly. I mean, chillier than uh, uh, Kolkata, but never like this. Okay, it might only be a short spell, and then we get milder and raining again. Who knows? So. <laughs> okay, Ritu and bro, everybody is well. Anil, welcome, Anil. Hare Krishna. Are you well? Uh, no, Prabhu, I've just got some fever and so oh. not uh, gone to office, so I just just saw the message. <laughs> yeah. yeah, some hot drink, uh, some hot tea, uh, ginger, <laughs> lemon water, and um, you have the heating on nicely at your house? Uh, yes, Prabhu, all full blast. Full blast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you just keep nice and warm and... Uh, with Krishna's grace and your devotional attitude, the fever will pass by. Thank you. So, we're looking for Bhagavad Gita verse tonight. 
Who has any suggestion? Who has any suggestion? Come on, it's up to you now. Choose. Pick and choose. Uh, may I suggest one, Prabhu? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I don't remember the reference, but it's Anashrata Hakkaram Falam. No, Karam you have to find the rest. You have to find the reference. Oh, uh, t -t -t okay, two minutes. No, two minutes is too long. Anyone else? I'm just looking for one, Prabhu. Okay. Maybe two minutes as well, but maybe I'll try it within a minute. <laughs> okay. Bhagavad Gita. Six one. Six, six one. Six one. That's a yoga chapter. The yoga chapter. That's nice. Okay, let's go for I will share that screen. Bhagavad Gita's Dhyana Yoga. Dhyana Yoga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. We're looking at Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 6, Text 1. Uh, Ritu and Prabhu, can you read us the Sanskrit? Yes, Prabhu. Om Namo Bhagavate. Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Sri Bhagavan Vacha, Anashita Karma Falam, Karmyam Karma Karotiya, Sasanyasi Cha Yogi Cha, Nani Ragni Cha Chakriya. Thank you so much. Uh, one moment. I need to come out of set for a second and go back into the screen share. So, karma, karoti, sannyas, yogi, all this karma palam, the fruit of karma. Amit, read us a translation, please. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, One who is unattached to the fruits of his work and who works as he is obligated is in the renounced order of life, and he is the true mystic, not he who lights no fire and performs no duty. Okay. And the purpose as well. In this chapter, the Lord explains that the process of the eightfold yoga system is a mean to control the mind and the senses. However, this is very difficult for people in general to perform, especially in the age of Kali. Although the eight although the eightfold yoga system is recommended in this chapter, the Lord emphasizes emphasizes that the process of karma yoga or acting in Krishna consciousness is better. Okay, so what do you understand here so far? Amit, what do we understand? 
yeah i i mean yoga is a is a technique to control the mind and senses very good absolutely we all know that we know that Prabhu, we know this already yes and so he's saying karma yoga or krishna consciousness is the best is a better yoga rather than um this yoga which is like can be false people who go to yoga classes mm -hmm. and think they're doing yoga which, which is good i mean it, they are doing yoga it does help them but in its true completeness no it doesn't help them yeah i think it does probably i i, I don't I, I i mean i've gone to yoga classes it does help, but it's not total yoga. You know, but I think it, it's gymnastics. It physically, it is gymnastics, but it does help them physically. Yes, um, okay. I think, yeah. That's all. But that's not real yoga. But it's it's gymnastics, right? But it's better than not. It's better than not doing it. I think you know. Yes, well, better than sitting on the seti and watching TV. <laughs> Go out to the yoga class and bend your body a little bit here and there and become more subtle. Yes, in that way, it helps. But that's not yoga. That's gymnastics. They call it yoga. Well, we we hear a little bit more. What what is and what is karma yoga then? Amit. Oh, let's let's ask Anil. Anil, what is karma yoga? They're obviously, uh, obviously. Prabhu, uh, yoga. The word yoga to understand first. Yoga means to add, join. To so that that is so. Uh, karma yoga means uh, adding to Krishna through karma. Means we are attaching to Krishna. That is yoga, and uh, through karma by uh, because different type different types of yoga. Gyan yoga is attaching yourself to Krishna through gyan. And karma yoga is attaching to him through action. Okay. Uh, how? Practically, how does it work? Uh, it works like in this uh, shaloka, uh, explained really nicely. Uh, it says, anashrita. Ashrit means to depend upon or attach. Uh, uh, un means not. So not attaching attaching to the result of your action. Uh, anashrita karmphalam karyam karam karotiya. We keep doing action. We don't refrain from uh, doing action. But sometimes people think yoga and samadhi, uh, you know, like the various stages of yoga, it means, or sannyas, it means to stop working, stop acting. Uh, but uh, Krishna here says uh, that is not what the yoga or uh, sannyas is. It means uh, what he, in his opinion, it is you work, but uh, you don't take, uh, don't refrain and abstain from action, re abstain from the result of action. To, to not stop the action, but don't get attached to the work fruit of uh, uh, action. Uh, sannyas not from action, but sannyas from the fruit of action. Okay, so how, how can we do that in a, a practical way? How? Uh, because we are motivated, everyone is motivated by the fruit. Let's put it a little bit clearer, by the result of our action. We acting uh, to get money, we acting to taste nice food, we acting uh, in so many ways. So, so how can we get free from that attachment to the fruit? I think uh, this, when we understand the real fruit, uh, that means once you are attached to Krishna, if we understand how we are getting uh, separated from our karma, the 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 action and reaction chain of action and reaction, uh, then that is a very very uh, good fruit. So when we see these little fruits, uh, we 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 abandon smaller fruits when we look at the bigger fruit, which is uh, which is uh, freeing us from. Uh, chain of action and reaction. 
So that is bigger attachment than smaller attachments. That that's what I think. Yeah, may I may I say something here? Um, and that's not from me. That's what Srila Prabhupada is saying. Like anything is nothing is from me here. I just repeating. Srila Prabhupada saying, as devotees, we never say, I think, in my opinion. <laughs> Either we know or we don't know. If we don't know, okay, so we don't know her. But uh, I think this is in the realm of mental speculation or scientists. I think it's like this. I think it's like that. And to tomorrow I, I think differently. So we'll try to avoid uh, ever saying, I think, in my opinion. Right? Uh, yes, Prabhu. Okay. Just a, a small thing. So, yes. getting attached to acting for Krishna. We recently had such a nice verse. We acting favorably to Krishna, in favor of Krishna. We can act in favor of Krishna. We can act also in favor of ourselves. Right? Means we can act for Krishna or we can act for ourselves. So, karma yoga... Sometimes karma yoga, like here, is, Srila Prabhupada says, is acting in Krishna consciousness. It's better than the Eightfold Yoga system. Uh, so karma yoga, but karma yoga is not pure Krishna consciousness. Right? It's the last verse of the... Yoga chapter 6, chapter, uh, Krishna says, uh, the one who is totally dedicated to me and serves me in devotional service, he is the best of yogis. So sometimes karma yoga is like karma we do, we are in a mixed mode. We acting for Krishna, but in favor of Krishna, but we also acting in our favor. But karma yoga really means we dedicate all our actions to Krishna. If all our actions are in favor of Krishna, then uh, there will be no material attachment. There will be attachment to Krishna. Anil, you want to read a little bit further here, everyone. Uh, Prabhu, I'm just uh, working on the phone, not on a big computer. Uh, can I just listen, please? Okay. I won't be able to read. Yeah. Uh, Rituan Prabhu, you want to read a bit further? Prabhu. Mm, everyone acts in this world to maintain his family and their paraphernalia, but no one is working without some self-interest, some personal gratification, be it concentrated or extended. The criteria of, of perfection is to act in, in Krishna consciousness and not uh, with a view to enjoying the fruits of work. To act in Krishna consciousness is the duty of every living entity because all are constitutionally parts and parcels of the Supreme. The parts of the body work for the satisfaction of the whole body. The limbs of the body do not act for self-satisfaction, but for the satisfaction of the complete whole. Similarly, the living entity who acts for satisfaction of the supreme whole and not for personal satisfaction is the perfect sannyasi, the perfect yogi. The sannyasi okay. sometimes artificially think that they have become liberated from all material duties and therefore they cease to perform Agnihotra Yajna fire sacrifices. But actually they are self-interested because their goal is to become one with the impersonal Brahman. Such a desire is greater than any material desire. But uh, but it is not without self-interest. Similarly, the mystic yogi who practices the yoga system with half-open eyes, seizing all material activities, desires some satisfaction for his personal self. But 
a person acting in Krishna consciousness works for the satisfaction of the whole that without self-interest. A Krishna conscious person has no desire for self-satisfaction. His criteria of success is the satisfaction of Krishna and thus he is the perfect sannyasi or perfect yogi. Lord Chaitanya, the highest perfectional symbol of renunciation, prays in this way. Nadhanam na janam na sundarim kavitam ba jagadish akamai mamu janmani janmanish pare bhavata bhakti rahetu kitvai. Chaitanya Chaitamita Anta Leela 2029 Shikshashtakam 4. O Almighty Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth nor to enjoy beautiful women. Nor do I want any number of followers. What I want only is the causeless mercy of your devotional service in my life, birth after birth. Sorry Thank you very me. much. Thank you very much. So sometimes, welcome Chayanti by Hare Krishna. Sometimes, uh, devotees ask, what shall we pray for? It's a good question. Like when we go to Vrindavan and uh, we're going to the Krishna Balaram tree, which is a Kalpa Vriksha, a wish fulfilling tree. So one can ask a wish to such tree, and the tree is a spiritual tree, will fulfill our wishes. It's a very old tree, Krishna Balaram tree, just behind uh, the Krishna Balaram Mandi. There's a Nasa, there are many uh, wish-fulfilling trees, Kalpa Vriksha trees in Vrindavan. Another very powerful is the Imlital, an Imlital, it's a tree which is uh, thousands of years old. These trees are very old. Uh, sometimes the main stem deteriorates and some side branches uh, sprouting out and the tree is just continuing in this way. In the spiritual world, it is full of desire trees. So the general idea is, I do remember this Krishna Balaram tree, it was just uh, the tree from the ground. Now, or days, they have built a platform, a bit of raised platform. So, devotees walking around the tree. And so, the system is, and then circumambulating that tree clockwise three times, and then put your head on the tree and silently state your wish. And devotees wishing all kinds of things. The so lady who is pregnant may say, let my child be healthy. Let it be a boy. Let it be a girl. Let our family be happy. And so many wishes. But one has to be very, very careful what one is wishing. All these wishes, let me have enough money, let me have health. These are not what devotees asking. Nice as a desire tree, no Krishna. Lord Chaitanya gives a perfect example. I have no desire to accumulate wealth. So, no economic development. No. Whatever comes, by Krishna's grace, I accept. What doesn't come, I don't lament. Nor to enjoy beautiful women. Everybody is beautiful women, enjoyment, even just looking. Very difficult for the eyes. They're automatically going to a beautiful woman on the street. When we walk, when we drive, automatically the eyes. So we have to come to that point. No, do I want to enjoy beautiful women? Enjoy means mentally enjoy. What to speak of physically enjoy, that is gross fall down. Nor do I want any number of followers. 
that's for uh, sannyasi or preacher, or that, that is very tempting. So we give up, sannyasis give up uh, karma, material desires, and then they're acting for Krishna, and before they know, they, they want to accumulate followers, they want to have many, many followers, like nowadays on Facebook and Instagram, people are just after followers. If someone has a million followers, he's seen as a uh, as a leader in trendsetter. As a, so everyone wants followers, cheap followers on Instagram and Facebook. Cheap. You say something wrong, everybody says bye bye. <laughs> Influences, yes. So he lodged an appraise. I don't want any number of followers. If some, as a sannyasi, he has one follower. It's good enough. Or like Gokisha Das Babaji Maharaj, the spiritual master of the spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada. So two generations back, he had only one disciple. Which was Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai. One disciple. Not hundreds and hundreds or thousands. So many uh, have a large following. So what shall we desire then? If we don't want any wealth or enjoy beautiful women or don't want any number of followers. What do you speak of material opulences of bigger bank account and uh, palatial building uh, and so on? So, Lord Chaitanya prays, what I want only is a causeless mercy of your devotional service in my life, birth after birth. So, Lord Chaitanya, of course, he speaks here like an ordinary human being, just to set an example, because Lord Chaitanya came to teach us. Like, we should not uh, be bewildered, said the Lord, speaks like that. Like uh, a teacher, we should not be bewildered when a teacher takes a hand of the pupil and guides him and writes with a hand and his hand A, B, C. We shouldn't think, oh, the teacher is learning the A, B, C. No, he's just showing how to write A, B, C. So in the same way, Lord Chaitanya is just showing. We should not desire to accumulate wealth, economic development. We should not desire that. A beautiful woman or any number of followers or any other material opulences or any uh, uh, fame, any of that respect even so the legitimate legitimate prayer for a devotee is give me devotional service let me serve you my lord birth after birth if i have to take another birth okay so be it if the lord wants me to take another birth sir, all, all my prayer is let me never forget you. Let me serve you. Or like Haridas Taku, he prayed, My Lord, if you decide to put me in, in the body of a dog, of course, he's such an elevated Devotee Haridas Taku, he will certainly not take birth as a dog. But he says in his humility, if you, my Lord, desire to put me into the body of a dog, please let it be a dog in the house of Vaishnavas. Well, that, that's, that's how I desire. Oh, birth after birth, yes. Srila Prabhupada says, we, if Krishna wants us to 
preach, to spread Krishna consciousness, to glorify the Lord in the heavenly planets. Okay, we will go. Or in hell, we go. There is no difference. There is no difference for a devotee, for a pure devotee, if he is cast into heaven or he is cast into hell. In both these circumstances, he will glorify his Lord. He will chant Hare Krishna and trying to induce others to chant Hare Krishna. So that's the example is given here by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Birth after birth. So devotees don't ask for liberation. Devotees, pure devotees don't even ask, my Lord, I let me go back home to Godhead after quitting this body. Which is a legitimate desire. Let me go to the spiritual world. Let me have this mukti of living with you on the same planet. Let me have the mukti of having the same bodily features as you, my Lord. Let me have the mukti of have, having the same opulence as you. All this is available. The devotee may accept these muktis, but he will never, ever accept Sayuchya Mukti. Let me merge into your existence, into the Brahmachati. That Mukti, a devotee finds the most distasteful. But the whole world is after this Mukti. Why people are after this Mukti? Of merging into the Brahmachati. Why? Because they are suffering so much in this material world. So want the pain to stop. And the pain is stopping if we have the Sayuchya Mukti merging into the blissful existence of the Lord. Also we're sacrificing our individuality. It's just like I have many times explained. You do some DIY at home and you put a nail for a beautiful picture of Krishna. And Masaya showed uh, Krishna who is just caught by her from behind who ran after uh, him with greater speed, uh, Lord Damoda. So we put the nail in the wall with a hammer and the hammer slips and the hammer comes down on his thumb. And oh, that is painful. And the thumb immediately starts swelling and gets already color of blue and purple. And, uh, and perhaps later on the nail is even coming off. So it's painful. What to do? What to do with that pain? Cold water. Thumb into cold water. That alleviates the pain. Immediately. Cold water. So that stops the pain for the time being. That's not the solution. It's just a, a pain relief. So the same is this Zayuchya Mukti. People suffering so much in this material world. Mostly from other people. But not only. Say so the Adi Deva, Devika. Also from natural disasters. Like now we see in Iceland, volcano is, is almost erupting. And it might erupt. Whole villages are swept away and earthquakes and these things are happening on a on a constant basis somewhere in this world. So this is uh, the Devika, the Devas. They are in charge of these things, of earthquake. Too cold right now. We're suffering, people suffering. It's too cold. Put the heating on, it's too cold. No, we cannot afford the heating. <laughs> so let's sit there with chambers and jackets and coats like me. <laughs> so that is one type of suffering. And there's another type of suffering which is very prominent at the moment in this age and day and age, are the Atmika. That, that suffering comes from the Atma, 
from the mind. So many an explosion of mental uh, diseases, of mental disabilities, of depression, of so many things uh, concerning the mind. And that can be as much painful, if not more, than suffering from cold or too much heat. The mind is causing us so much suffering. So that is another type. An Adibautica, suffering from other living entities, very prominent, someone causing us pain constantly, somewhere. Somewhere someone is causing us pain by neglecting us, by not praising us, we, we feel we should be praised, we have done something good, and nobody takes notice, no, we suffer. Disrespect. He disrespected me. He didn't even look at me. He ghosted me, gaslighted me. So his sufferings are there. So, therefore, it is no wonder that almost everybody wants to finish that suffering. I want liberation, I want mukti. And all what they know is I want to merge into the Brahman. I want to become one with the Brahman. That mukti, that's all what they know. They don't have any idea of other muktis, what to speak of devotional service. No, the whole world is if they're coming to such excessive suffering, nirvana, same thing. Or on a more gross platform, people just commit suicide. I can't take it anymore. I'm suffering so much. It's too much for me. Suicide. Though people are suffering. But it's not a solution. A devotee will never accept. Suicide means ghostly bodies in most cases. You don't want this body? Okay, so be without body. Kill this body? You want to kill this body? Okay, be without body. That means a ghost. It's just uh, uh, there is uh, without a gross body. Huh? Just a subtle body. So how much Painful is set. We already feel painful. We cannot satisfy our desires because we don't have enough money, people generally. Right, so they're suffering. Too poor, want more money. I have so many desires. I cannot fulfill my desires because I don't have enough money. I cannot eat what I desire to eat. And so many things. What to speak of being in a subtle body, a ghostly form, but not having a gross body because we we wanted to kill this gross body. Okay, so Krishna will sanction that. You want to kill this body? You kill this body. So be there in a subtle body, ghostly body. The same desires are still there because the desires are in the mind. Also nicely, as Srila Prabhupada says, uh, material desires is a mental concoction. Right? That's interesting. It's not that the senses need some satisfaction. It's actually the mind is a mental concoction. All material desires is a mental concoction. It is not necessary. It's just the mind is dreaming up, if I have this, if I do that, then that will give me some satisfaction. And we do it and we still are not satisfied. And that satisfaction, which we perhaps get for some short time, then it is dis disappearing. 
and the next desire is there, and the next, and the next, and the next, and we're running after one desire after the next, never being satiated, never being peaceful, happy. So people want to become desireless. Okay, merchant is a brahmachoti. That's a solution. No, it's not a solution. People don't know about the devotional service of the Lord. So this Sayuchi Mukti is just trying to stop the pain from material life. And when this, then the people hear from the devotees, no, in the spiritual world there is all variety. There are relationships. Everything is there in the spiritual world and we can enjoy it. And say, don't want to know. Oh, no, 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 not again. I've already had this here. All these different forms and desires and relationships and I have enough. So now you're saying in the spiritual world, again, there is form. I want to destroy that form. <coughs> Nirvana. Formless. Nirvishesha. Shunyavadi. Nothingness. Nihilism in Western uh, philosophy. It's called nihilism. There's some nihilists, Jean-Paul Sartre, and others they have a philosophy. There is no meaning of anything. Well, if there's no meaning of anything, then just commit suicide. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So, but the devotional service, of course, they don't understand. That is not just, again, form and relationships and desires and all of that. No, but it's spiritual desires and spiritual relationships. So we could ask, what's the difference between material relationship and a spiritual relationship? In material life, if someone becomes successful, we become envious. Why should he? Why? How is his neighbor has this big Lamborghini car? Well, he's just working in the office like I do. He must be dealing with some drugs or some illegal means and become envious because he has a brand new Lamborghini sports car in his driveway. And if someone in material life becomes more successful as we are, we become envious. Now, spiritual life is very, very different. If a devotee makes spiritual progress, we, we are very happy. Look, this devotee has so nicely advanced. He offering such nice service to the Lord. I wish I could one day also come to such a position. Or another example, famous example is given. If you throw many stones into the lake, the stones are our material desires. Everybody in this material world has so many material desires. And there's always competition. Cheated, cheater and cheated. Every business, business transaction is a kind of cheating. But we want to be cheated. We are a part of the cheating process. We are be cheated. And uh, the seller is a cheater. And if we're selling something, then we it's a cheater, and others are a cheater. It is constantly going on to make some profit. And business, that goes along with lying as well. Oh, I'll give you for the, for the cost price. No, I will never give you for the cost price. It's lying. And you're impressed. Oh, 
It's giving me for the cost price. Oh, okay, I'll take two. <laughs> What's the cost price? Well, it wasn't never the cost price. It was just uh, like all advertisement is based on that. So, people don't understand, generally, people, that in the spiritual world there are spiritual relationships. If we are throwing one stone into that lake, it has beautiful ripples around. So if we keep Krishna in the center, which is the spiritual world, not Narayan or Krishna is in the center of everybody's devotional service. Everybody is serving Krishna. So you throw one stone in the lake, there is uh, concentric circles from the inside going to the outside undisturbed. That is the spiritual world. Because we are all trying to satisfy Krishna. But the material world, we are trying to satisfy ourselves. Our own desires. And then we are in competition with everybody else. And we will see that at the moment in this world. It is a competition about resources. About oil, about gas, about minerals. About rare earth elements. So many things about water even, and soon it will be a competition about food. So people fighting, because everyone wants to satisfy their desires. They are in competition, in direct conflict with everybody else. Because this, the resources in this material world are limited. Limited. And if everybody wants the same thing, then there is fighting. So that's material consciousness. Spiritual consciousness is to satisfy Krishna and taking the remnants, whatever. If, if there are any remnants, we take. If there are none, we are happy also. So the liberation. Mukti of merging into the Brahman, that will not help us. That it is just like that kind of liberation. It's just like sitting in a vast field. Like in America, you have these big fields. Wherever you look, like cornfields, wherever you look, in all directions, there is no end. It's miles and miles and miles of monoculture. So just imagine you're sitting in the field. The, after the harvest, perhaps, to make it more clear. It's a plain field. You have a comfortable chair. And you're sitting there. Just sitting there. Because Brahma Chodi means eternity. You exist eternally, but there's no variety. There are no variety is a matter of enjoyment, Srila Prabhupada says. That's a very famous saying. Variety is a matter of enjoyment. So therefore we have a variety of foodstuff we offer to Krishna. And variety of foodstuffs we respecting as prasadam. It's a variety. If we had the same prasadam or the same preparation, just day in and day out. Of course, prasadam is, I can eat kitri every single day. But sometimes I feel also, well, I had five days of kitri now. I had seven days of Kitri. Let me let me cook some rice and dal and veggie separately. <laughs> it's the same as in the Kitri, rice, dal and veggie. But then the Kitri is mixed up. But some variety, okay, I need some variety. I had enough of my Kitri. Let's cook raw, dice and sabshi, veg, vegetables, veggies separately. 
Okay, that's variety, nice. And when I have done a few days of cooking raal dice and uh, veggies separately, then, oh, I think I'll, I like some kitri again. <laughs> so between says two, and if everything fails, okay, let's just make some spaghetti and tomato sauce <laughs> and some cheese. So that's it. We want variety, but imagine you sitting in that Brahmachoti, you eternal, sitting there, nothing to do, nothing to enjoy. How long, how, how can you exist there? You can't, because the soul wants to enjoy. Actually, we want to enjoy. Every living entity wants to enjoy, but we enjoying, we're trying to enjoy in a wrong way. We're trying to enjoy in a material way, in a selfish way, just for our own sense enjoyment in competition with everybody else. That's a problem. But the, the urge of enjoyment is there. Therefore, we enjoy in Krishna consciousness. We enjoy of serving Krishna. How much enjoyment is that? Sometimes the question is asked, what is more enjoyment? Like when we speak about prasadam, what is a higher enjoyment? Serving prasadam or being served? In the material world, immediately with the material consciousness, oh, not being served. I don't want to be anybody's servant. I want to be some master. Everybody should serve me. Oh, that's very nice. Like the king. I'm sitting back and I get served. My wife is serving me prasada. The master, I'm the master of the house. Okay, prasada, I'm ready. Then the wife has to serve her. So, what is more enjoyable, serving or being served? There's a very nice story. I've personally experienced many, many, many years back. After Gorbunim in Mayapur, there is a festival, Nanda Maharaj's festival. Nanda Maharaj was the birth of Krishna. Nandotsava, it's called. Nanda Utsava festival of Nanda Maharaj. So Nandotsava, Nanda Maharaj gave so many things away. He gave thousands of cows to the Brahmins. He gave gold to the Brahmins. That was very common. Kings also. Nanda Maharaj was a king of the cowherd men. He had nine lakhs of calves, 900,000 cows. We cannot even imagine. And Krishna knew all of them by name. <laughs> they all had names. Not an ear tuck like nowadays. No, they had names. They were decorated also. We saw the horns painted, gold plated, like that. So, if If we sit in that empty field, we cannot stay there because we want enjoyment. And there's no enjoyment, there's just eternity. So those who want this mukti, this sayuchya mukti, they fall in due course of time, they fall back into the material world. Because the soul is ever active, we cannot just sit there. There's a nice story a devotee, Srila Prabhupada, gave this example. Just imagine. So the devotee was kind of exhausted with book distribution in New York. So, okay, so take some rest, Srila Prabhupada said. Just imagine you, you're sitting in a field, like that example given. And he explained to the devotee, just for eternity, you're sitting there. That's you. How peaceful. Peaceful, just sit there. 
Nobody else around, just you. And so the devotee said, oh, no, I'd rather go back to New York and distribute books. <laughs> yes, we want that. So this, this sannyasis, this seekers from the Brahma Chyoti merging, they fall down back into the material world. Brahma Chyoti is not material. That's a spiritual Chyoti. It's Krishna's effulgence, which sustains everything, which keeps the planets up. And you know, I mean, after all, it's a it's a effulgence of Krishna reflecting from his toenails. Toenails. So generally, feet are insignificant, and the toes are even less significant, and the toenails are even less significant. So said Brahma Chodi, where the whole world is aiming for, it's coming from the toenails of the Lord. So the next question must be, well, if that is so attractive, said Brahma Chodi, what about the Lord himself? What about his beautiful shining face? His peacock feathers landed on his head. What about his smile? What about his pastimes? It must be so much more attractive. We are not satisfied with just the light emanating from uh, the toenails, reflecting from the toenails. And in fact, in the Isupanishad is a nice verse where the devotee prays, and please, my Lord, remove this curtain of the Brahma Chodhi. Remove this clearing effulgence, please. So I can see your beautiful form. So that's the devotee's desire. Again, devotees may accept living on the same planet as the Lord, same opulences, and any of the other muktis, five types of muktis, but not sayujya or merging. So a devotee, therefore, he prays at the Kalpa Riksha trees or prays to, in his personal prayers. Please, my Lord, let me serve you birth after birth, wherever you put me. Let me never forget you. Let me always remember you and never forget you. That is an ultimate prayer, not for material benefits or like the Christians pray. My dear Lord, please give us our daily bread. Daily bread is already given to every species of life. Food is allocated. The elephant in the jungle, tons and tons of greenery. And uh, the ant get her portion what is set aside for her, everybody gets his fair share. And if we think that Krishna will not look after us, then we should remember Bhagavad Gita. Yoga Kshemam Vaham Yaham. I supply what you lack and maintain what you have. That the Lord is promising that. Oh, that was just really on this last paragraph of Krishna. What else is there in this purport by Srila Prabhupada? Anyone? Any comments? Any questions? Hare Krishna Prabhu, I have one question. Yes. Uh, Prabhu, uh, this is the shloka from Shikshashtakam, uh, Nadarang Najanang. So that is our, uh, you know, very top goal, very high goal. Yes. Uh, like, how do we aim for that? Because at present we have mixture. We want Krishna, we want prosperity, we want happiness, we want like everything to go on. Uh, we never, as you mentioned, like, we don't want. Uh, like 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 Kunti Maharani, we can't uh, 
we are not in the stage of uh, you know asking for uh, sufferings and other things so we always want uh, that a peaceful prosperous life to go on side by side real tracked by uh, you know advancement in devotion yeah. uh, so how do we uh, you know give off all these things and then ultimately reach that stage that's a good question and it's not the first time you have asked these questions either <laughs> so how do you do that well we just have to keep on chanting Hare Krishna and offering devotional service. And in due course of time, as we gradually, 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 gradually advance, we, we don't deviate. We do our allocated rounds, our 16 rounds, and we follow the four principles, which is already hard enough. We do that and become fixed in that, and we carry on and carry on. And we eventually come to the platform of continuous chanting. Srila Prabhupada's writing is full of continuous chanting. Sometimes Srila Prabhupada says 16 rounds. Why only 16? Good question. Why only 16? Why, why we think 16 rounds accomplished? The rest is economic development. No. Why only 16? After 16 rounds is continuous chanting. It's all over. Then on Saturday, we'll speak a bit about that. Nama Bas, Nama Bharat, Shuddha Nam. Nama Bas, uh, Nama Bharat is, of course, a Bharat is offensive chanting. There are 10 offenses to the holy name. So if we commit any or all of the 10 offenses, then that's Nam Aparat, offensive chanting. And the progress will be, will be checked, really. There is no real progress on the Nam Aparat stage. So how to counteract Nam, Ap Nam Aparat? I mean, let's just remind one of some of the more Common offenses. It is an offense to maintain material attachments even after hearing so many instructions on this matter. Wow, that's a, that's your question, Rituan Prabhu. We keeping some material uh, karma. We keep some karma, some material desires, and at the same time, we doing devotional service. So. One spoon for Krishna, one for me. Right? So, that offense is telling us of maintaining material attachments, maintaining material desires, even after having heard so many instructions on this matter. Constantly we're hearing, like tonight we're hearing instructions, and like every time we're reading Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, the instructions are the same throughout. So that's an offense. So what is a counter action to these offenses? Because the next stage of Nam Aparat chanting, offensive chanting, is Nama Bas. Nama Bas, where so offenses are diminishing. There's still there some offenses, but less and less and less and less. And if all the offenses have ceased to be, then we come into the realm of Shutanam, pure chanting of Hare Krishna. And then we realize really truly realize that the Lord and his name are non-different. And then we coming to the ecstatic uh, stage of Krishna consciousness, to the ecstatic stage of chanting Hare Krishna. So what is a remedy? Every doctor knows. For every disease there's a remedy. So Nama Parat, offensive chanting, is a disease because it's mixed with karma, 
Okyan. So the remedy the doctor prescribes us, and we'll speak about more if we get the chance on Saturday. Also, we will try to do a lot of Hare Krishna mantra chanting, because last Saturday, uh, everybody's mind was all over the place. The devotees couldn't concentrate for some reason or another. Not on the class, not not even in Kirtan very much. So we want to try to do some deep feeling, some Kirtan without any distractions. Not that suddenly I have to do something else or I have to go out of the temple and come back and this and that and the mind is all over the place. So we'll try, let's see if it works, at least we can try to focus on chanting the holy name in a bit of kirtan, uh, perhaps a bit longer kirtan, longer than usual, until we come into the spiritual platform where all our anxieties disappearing. Anxiety means uh, we looking into the future. But the future has not really even arrived yet. Again, a mental concoction. We are in anxiety because we think what will happen in the future. What will happen in the future that will come? If you think about it, if anxiety or not anxiety, or it may not come, and we are not in control of the future. And lamentation. We are lamenting about the past. If I would have done differently, I would be in a better position today. Lamentation. That is past. It's not real. The future is not real. And the past is not real, has gone. The only thing what is real is the presence. So to chant Hare Krishna, we need to be in the presence. And being absorbed by that sound vibration of the holy name in the presence, here and now. And then all anxiety will disappear because we don't look in the future. And all lamentation will disappear because we don't look back to the past. That is wanted. And then we are on the spiritual platform, on the transcendental platform, and then we will experience, we are having a spiritual experience of the holy name of the Lord. And then we will try to achieve that on Saturday. We can't promise if it's working or not working. We can try to induce everyone to just hear and chant. That's all. Hear and chant. Shravanam Kirtanam. Then the mind will be focused. Then the mind will really be focused. So, what the question still stands. What is a remedy? What is the antidote for Nama Parat, for offensive chanting? And Shaiva Dharma and other scriptures are telling us by Bhakti Thakur, they're telling us what is a remedy. And don't be surprised. The remedy is continuous chanting. <laughs> just see the remedy for offensive chanting is just more chanting continuously chanting Hare Krishna that is a remedy and if we with this con sometimes people say the what they say well continuous chanting 24 hours chanting always chanting so how can I someone was asking from congregation some time back, not our congregation, the master congregation. Well, you say I can even chant when I drive the car, but 
wouldn't that be not very attentive chanting? Well, if it isn't attentive chanting, what's the remedy? Keep chanting all the time, continuously. That's a remedy. But then who is there to say that when you sit down in your room with your beat back, you are more attentive chanting than driving the car? The likelihood is that you're chanting in your room, and particularly later on in the day, that is also not attentive because uh, kids are screaming and uh, uh, so many noises and maybe in the living room the TV is on and this and that. Well, that's not attentive chanting either. The attentive chanting, if you really want that attentive chanting, that is 4.30 in the morning. And the whole world is still asleep. What is night for all beings is a time of awakening for the self-realized soul. We had said Amit was asking some time back this verse. We said, I don't know what it means. What? Yes, it means exactly that. Everybody is sleeping. And we're chanting Hare Krishna at 4.35 o'clock in the morning. That's one meaning. Of course, the other meaning is everybody is after economic development and sense gratification, and that is night for the body. We, we, we're not interested. We're not interested. All what we're interested in is self-realization, Krishna consciousness. That's an awakening. That's, and for the materialist, it's just the opposite. When they hear of spiritual activities, they're not interested. Oh, how boring is that? I want rather some Netflix, some action, computer game, this and this and that. So, how to get from the stage of we have still karma, desires to satisfy Material desires, it's just a fact. They're still there. We cannot just wish them away and they're gone. They're there. Because they have been there, implanted in our heart for millions and millions of lifetimes. So they're there. So what to do, how to, and we also, we have already come a long way. Much more than any material, any karmi, any fruitive worker who only know about satisfying their senses and satisfying the material desires. That all what they know about, they don't know about anything else. So as devotees, we have come a long way. If we still have material desires, but we also trying to act in Krishna's favor, doing something for Krishna. So it's half-half, 50-50. So Ritu and Prabhu's question is how to, how to accelerate this, how to uh, act for Krishna in Krishna's favor more and more, how to, how to diminish our material desires. And so the devotee thinks like that. Oh, I wish I would have no material desires. That wish is good. That is our sincerity. And said, uh, that is very strong. If we strongly wish, I wish I would not have these material desires. <clears throat> but it needs a little bit more. It, whenever these material desires come, we need to analyze when they come, what triggers them. There yeah, is usually, if we pick any material desire, there is usually a trigger. And the trigger may very well be in the mind, some past sense gratification we have actively pursued. We have engaged, let's say, we have engaged in some sinful activities. Even 20 years back, is not gone. 
a sinful activity, and we're speaking of breaking the principles, for instance, a sinful activity follows us, the reaction follows us like a shadow for some time, for some time. Because a sinful activity, likewise a pious activity, it makes impression in our mind. And if you ever had some dough, not chapati dough, but the yeast dough, a bread dough, a pizza dough or anything, when it's rising, it's, it's going air inside, and then you put your finger inside, it makes a hole, and after some time it rises again and the hole is completely disappeared. Or like uh, uh, sometimes we have this memory foam cushion for our sleeper. It, it keeps the shape of our head, and if we wake up in the morning, then the, the, the cushion goes back to the normal shape. This dent for our head uh, stays for some time, and then it's, it disappears. So, these sinful activities in this life and in previous lives, they, they throw a shadow for some time. How how does that shadow uh, manifest? It manifests in our mind. The mind is so, so important. It manifests in our mind. Then suddenly in the mind, the mind goes back to the sinful activity we have performed 20 years ago. And the mind is enjoying. Even so, at the time, the sinful activity was very attractive, but then it turns sour. It always turns sour. <clears throat> then it turns miserable. That we don't remember. The mind is just painting a beautiful picture, how nicely we enjoyed some 20 years ago. And then 20 years after we enjoying that sinful activity in the mind, We've completely forgotten what a disaster came out of it. That's one way it can help us if we remember the disaster. It always leads to disaster. So, therefore, these desires, this mental concoction, these desires for material enjoyment, they manifest in the mind. They come from past sinful activities and so on. So what to do? Just carrying on in our Krishna consciousness with all sincerity, with even more uh, determination than ever before, because life is short. And when we advance in bodily age, 50, 60, 70, then we feel the urgency. That is not to say as people say, oh, bhakti, that's for old people. I can do that when I'm old. Well, that doesn't work like that either. Like the gentleman. Why don't you take to bhakti? No, I can't right now. My, my daughter is just get married. Okay, come back. Then you tell me more about bhakti. Okay, come back in a year's time. So, the daughter married, yes, so we, are, we take to Bhakti now, but we have grandchildren. <laughs> so I'm looking after my grandchildren. Once they're grown up, then I'll take to Bhakti. And it goes on and on and on and great grandchildren and all like the gentleman, why don't you come to the Brahmin, come to the spiritual world? Oh no, I have to get my daughter married. Okay, Narada Muni comes back. Your daughter's married. What now? Yeah, grandchildren, similar story. The first story was actually a real story <laughs> of me preaching to someone here in Leicester. Uh, and then eventually the Brahmin, when Narada Muni came back, he had become a dog. So Brahmin had become a dog. And so Narada said, why don't you come now with me? 
Krishna has an open invitation. Come, take up Krishna consciousness. Come to the spiritual world. I can't. Woo, woo. I have to guard the house of my master. So there's always an excuse and always an excuse and then body after body after body will never get out of it. Therefore, determination is very important. We have to feel the urgency. We have to really feel the urgency of the time is passing by. The most valuable thing we have is the time. Because all what we have is between our birth and our uh, bodily disappearance, our death, 60, 70, 80 years. What's that? What is 80 years? It's nothing. It just goes away like, like, I don't know, like just very quickly. Nothing. 80 years, only 80 years. Some trees are thousands of years old. Of course, we don't want to have the form of a tree and standing there for thousands of years. That's miserable. But if we become aware of the urgency, how to become aware of the urgency? How become aware of the time is passing by? Or Ritual Prabhu, that's very easy for you. Now you came to the UK and... You'll be doctor, and soon you will be a, a consultant, and you will climb up and climb up, and the salary is climbing up, and then you had one son, now you have two sons, and it's going on. There's all indicators. Oh, time is passing by. Maybe you have three sons or a daughter, or maybe not. But then you will realize at one point, oh, i got some gray hair. <laughs> Gray hair. Oh, let me, let me put some black color there. No, you won't do that. But I have seen many Indian gentlemen sitting in the barber shop, where I have had my head shaved, uh, and uh, say getting this kind of black paste. Fifty, sixty year old Indian gentlemen, uh, black paste on their hair. It's like shoe cream. I don't know shoe cream. Nowadays, nobody knows what is shoe cream anymore. It was some paste you put on your black shoes and let it dry and then you with a brush, you buff it off and then you shine. So it's just oh, it's like toothpaste, but black, like tar. Perhaps it is some kind of tar. And then the, the barber put it on with a brush he brushes all the, over the gray hair. And then they have to sit in the chair for half an hour reading some newspaper and some someone else gets a haircut in the meantime. And then after they're coming back and they're washing their hair, and so no more gray hair. Very, very important for them. Gray hair. No gray hair. Because gray hair means old and nobody likes to be old. Everybody pretends to be eternally young and live here forever and ever, but time is passing by. So really, what we are saying, just carry on your devotional service. Carry on your chanting, Hare Krishna, increase your rounds. Increase. Don't, don't think. 16, done. That's it. End of story. Until I die. No. Next stage is chanting throughout the day, as you do when you go to the bus stop and this and this and that. Well, the time will come when you practice continuous chanting and the time will come you can't stop. Like Lord Chaitanya. He couldn't stop. Even by going to the bathroom, he had to hold his tongue. Well, that is very extreme. But you will find out that without thinking, I want to chant Hare Krishna, you're chanting, you're catching yourself. Oh, what I'm doing? I'm chanting Hare Krishna. While eating prasad, I'm chanting Hare Krishna. While walking, while this, while that, I'm chanting Hare Krishna. In the background, Hare Krishna is going on, going on. 
even when we listen to other people, a personal experience, particularly when other people are moaning. <laughs> we don't like to hear someone moaning, but sometimes we have to listen to it. And the chanting is going on. Oh, can't you not give them attention to the moaning person? Huh? No, you give attention also. You hear what they're saying. But if someone is moaning, normally they don't want an answer. They just want someone to to listen to them. So before you know, you, you listen to them and the Hare Krishna mantra is going on. So many situations it can go on wherever you are. Of course, it can go on while you're speaking with someone else. Then it cannot really go on. So again, simple, carry on what you're doing, but increase your devotional service. Increase your deity worship. Increase uh, which you're doing, Namhata, Dabi Namhata now. Hopefully regularly, increase your responsibilities, increase, increase, increase. And as we increase our devotional service, our desire for selfish enjoyment will diminish. It will go less and less and less, because it can only be one or the other. Krishna, consciousness is like light, and ignorance is like darkness. Wherever there is light, there is no darkness. Darkness, in fact, is just the absence of light. Darkness is not something separate. There is light and there is darkness. No. There is light and there is an absence of light. There is Krishna and there is an absence of Krishna and that is Maya. That is darkness. That is material desires. Spiritual desires, spiritual activities, that's a normal thing. The most, uh, uh, the greatest portion of living entities are never attempted to enjoy material desires and material sense gratification, material opulence, and never. The vast majority is only a small group of souls who have somehow or other developed this desire. I want to enjoy separately from Krishna. In fact, I want to be like Krishna. I want to be lording it over. I want to control. I want to enjoy like Krishna. A small number. Unfortunately, that's us. We are here. In the prison. We are prisoners. We are, uh, we are criminals. But there is a way of getting out of it. So the short answer, there was a long answer, and the short answer is just increase your devotional service, increase your chanting with all determination, and be aware that the time is ticking by. And before you know, little Tejas has become a, a big boy like Padma, and before you know, Padma is going to the university, and Tejas is going to school, and before you know, Tejas is going to university, and you and Amrita Rate are alone. The children are gone. And the children getting married, and there will be grandchildren. And then it's time to go. Does it answer your question? <laughs> In a long way. Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Just carry on. Carry on, carry on. The purification is happening on a daily basis. We're chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada said, 50 years is more than enough to become fully Krishna conscious. Perfect. Let's come to the Nama Bas stage. And the offenses are really minimal, maybe only we breaking one offense, we committing one offense, and then we, we are conscious and counteract and do something, and then our offenses have stopped. 
and then is the Shuddhanam, the pure chanting, and then the feelings and the emotions will manifest. And I think here we stop. Any other question? Amit, a question? Anil. There's no problem. This is quite clear. <laughs> it was quite interesting. I'm surprised myself for what came out of my mouth. <laughs> it's quite, quite interesting. All of that. Yes. Okay. Anil, will you be able to come on Saturday? Um, I'll try, Prabhu, definitely. Uh, I, I think I'll be better by then, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. If you still have any kind of uh, germs or viral or anything, uh, don't come. Don't give it to us, sir. <laughs> yes, you, you will still. You're not, you're not having COVID, have you? No, no, no. It's just a uh, old. How you know? Ah, uh, because there wasn't too much uh, fever okay. the symptoms. Like uh, it, it's just uh, cold symptoms. Okay. Anyway, we don't want your cold either. But you may be very well. <laughs> yes. You may be very well uh, cured. By Saturday, it's only Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you have three days more. If you, everything, symptoms have disappeared and no more coughing and no more sneezing and uh, all that, then do come. If you feel you're not completely cured, come on Zoom. Sure, sure. Right? Yeah. And we have beautiful Kirtan. Vitu and Prabhu Amrita Madhya do come, will share with us in the Kirtan. And if we have some time, we have a beautiful class and we also speak, we have some verses uh, focusing on this Nama Bas more directly from different from Harinam Chintamani and perhaps a bit of reading from Chaiva Dharma if I can find the reference and uh, we take it from there. Okay, thank you very much for having been here tonight. See you on Saturday. Keep warm. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu.